Hello and welcome to this lesson on semantic and instance segmentation using Pixellib. Pixellib is a library created for performing image and video segmentation using just a few lines of code. It is a flexible Python library created to allow easy integration of image and video segmentation into different software solutions. So you can perform two different kinds of segmentation using Pixellib and the segmentations are semantic segmentation and instance segmentation. So semantic segmentation is the segmentation where the objects in an image with the same pixel values are segmented with the same color maps. So here, even if we have different cars over here, we have the same color for them, which is blue. And for all of the trees in this image, we have the same color, which is green. And for all of the buildings over here, we have a brownish color. So this is how semantic segmentation works. So we're just segmenting a certain semantic object. And in case of instance segmentation, instances of the same object are segmented with different color maps. Here you can see that different cars have different color maps associated with them. Uh, we have different objects detected in this image. And this is what you would typically see when you're performing object detection. So you have a bounding box and the instance segmentation for the object in that bounding box. Now in this lesson, we'll learn how to perform both of these segmentations. So let us start by installing and importing Pixellib. So the basic requirements for Pixellib are as follows. Your Python version should be between 3.5 to 3.7 at this time of recording. Your pip version, which is your Python package manager, should be above the version number 19 and you should have TensorFlow 2.0 or above installed. So to install the libraries necessary for this tutorial, you can run the following command through the command line or terminal on your machine. I've commented this out because I've already installed this, but if you write an exclamation mark followed by pip install tensorflow pixellib, you'll have both of these libraries installed. I won't run this for now since I've already installed them, but go ahead on your end. Now to import the library in Python is quite simple and we just write import pixellib and if I run this you can see that the import is successful so pixellib has been imported in Python. Now let us look at how to perform semantic segmentation using pixellib. So we will be performing semantic segmentation in this sample video that I'll show you over here. Ignore all of this for now I'll just run this. and. Here we have the video on which we will be performing the segmentation. So let me play this and here you can see that there are multiple objects in any given frame of the video. So this is perfect for what we're trying to do. And regarding the code over here, I'm just simply importing the video method from the ipython.display module. I'm setting the video file path which I have locally. So it's in the videos folder and the video file is called test underscore video dot mp4. So this is my file path and to display the video in Jupyter, I'm calling the video method, I'm passing the file path and I'm setting embed as true since I'm embedding it into the Jupyter notebook. So you do not need all of these lines of code. It's just for me to show you what kind of video we are going to be working with. Now let's get started with semantic segmentation. To perform semantic segmentation using Pixellib, we need a pre-trained model called exception, which has been trained on the aid 20k dataset. You can download the pre-trained model from the link in the description and keep it in the root directory of your code base. I've already done it. Now let's get started with actually segmenting the video. The code for performing semantic segmentation using Pixellib is as follows. So first I'm importing the semantic segmentation object type from the pixellib.semantic module. So if I run this, the import is done. Now I'm creating an instance of the semantic segmentation object by calling it over here and I'm assigning that instance to the variable segment underscore video. So if I run this, I've created a semantic segmentation instance. Then I'm loading the pretend model, which I've already talked about, which is called deep lab v3 underscore exception 65 underscore 820k dot h5. And I'll be loading this using the load 820k model method from the semantic segmentation object, which is segment video. So here you can see I'm calling the load 820k model from the segment underscore video variable, which is our object over here. 
and for this method I'm just specifying the file path or the file name in this case which is our modal name so if I run this we would have loaded the 820k model so instead of using a pre-trained model if you go and look into your documentation you can train your own semantic segmentation model I'll also keep a link for the documentation in case you're interested on that now let us use this model to perform semantic segmentation on the video we've seen over here. So for this, we're calling the process underscore video underscore 820k method from our semantic segmentation object. And here are some parameters that I'm specifying. So the first parameter here is our input video file path. Remember it was videos slash test underscore video dot mp4. You can use any video of your own and put in your file path as it is in your directory. So in this case, this is our input video file and I'm specifying that the frames per second in this video is 30 and the output video name, that is the video that is generated after the semantic segmentation should be called semantic underscore segmentation underscore output dot mp4 and that should be stored in the folder videos. If you do not have a videos folder, create one in order to successfully run this or you can just write this to get the video in your root directory. If I run this, this will take quite some time since we're processing a large video over here and as you can see, this has a good level of resolution to it. So this will take some time. I'll just cut to the part where this segmentation is completed and I'll show you the video. So here you can see the video and you can see that the road has a color map of gray the tree has a color map of green, the cars have a color map of blue, and it feels a little bit jumbled up. But still, this is what semantic segmentation means. And if you use another video, maybe you'll get even better results because the cars in this case are quite far in the frame. Okay, now let us move on to performing instant segmentation using pixel lib. We'll be performing instant segmentation in the same sample video as which we have used before. So in this case, I'm displaying the video in Jupyter again, and this is our video. So to perform instant segmentation using Pixellib, we'll need a pre-trained model called Mask RCNN. And this model architecture is popularized for its use for instant segmentation. So Mask RCNN has been trained on the Coco dataset, and you can download the pre-trained model from the link in the description and keep it in the root directory of your code base. So once you've done that, we can actually start performing instance segmentation. So first I'm importing the instance underscore segmentation object type from the pixellib.instance module. Remember we had done this earlier for semantic segmentation as well, but we were using the semantic module instead of the instance module. So if I run this, the instance underscore segmentation object type has been imported. Then the process is same. So here I'm instantiating an object which is of an instance instance underscore segmentation. I'm assigning it to the variable segment underscore video and I'll run this to make the assignment happen. Now let's load the pre-trained model for performing instance segmentation which is the mask RCNN model using the load model method from our instance segmentation object. And here in the load model method, I'm passing in the parameter as the file path, which is in this case, the file name. So if you download the file, the file name would automatically be mask underscore rcnn underscore coco dot h5. So if I run this, we've successfully loaded the model into Python. Also, you can ignore this warning over here since this is related to the actual package itself and not something that you can do to fix it. Now, using this pre-trained model, we can call the process video method off of our instance segmentation object and pass in a couple of parameters in order to perform instance segmentation. So the first parameter or argument I'm passing here is the input video file path, which is videos slash test underscore video dot mp4. And then I'm specifying that I want to show the bounding boxes during instance segmentation. Also, I want to extract the segmented objects, but I do not want to save it since saving it means that we'd want to store multiple images of each of the objects in the video itself. And again, our frames per second is 30 in this case, since the video is 30 frames per second and the output video name is video slash instance underscore segmentation underscore output dot mp4. 
So this process video method over here is responsible for creating our instance segmentation for the video. And this is how easy it is to perform instance segmentation as well as semantic segmentation in Python. So if I run this, this will take some time again since we are working with a video of quite a large resolution. But still, I'll just cut to the actual output. So here you can see that we're detecting various objects in the image and we're also segmenting the instances. This is how instance segmentation can be done using Pixellib. Again, these models are not perfect and you have to create your own custom model in order to work for the data set that you are aiming for. But still, this is a good step to get started. Now you can build off of what you've done already and create a video background removal tool using this. So you already know how to segment semantics as well as instances from a video. So to create a video background removal tool, you just have to work with the pixels by segmenting either the semantics or the instances from the video. I would love to see your responses for this. So if you actually work on creating this tool, please make sure to comment down the link of your project. It may be a GitHub link or a GitLab link, but still just put the link there and I'll check it out. So that is it for this video on how to perform semantic as well as instance segmentation in Python using Pixellib.